You're listening to Priest of Word broadcast. Brother Dean Carmichael Jr. We got a special guest speaker today. He's no stranger here, Brother Charles Moore. He's going to bring a message for us that the Lord has laid on his heart. I pray that you'll be attentive and that the Lord will bless you with this message. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. I pray, Lord, that you'll use this message for your honor and your glory. I pray, Lord, you'll use your man, dear God, the fruits of his labor. I pray, Lord, for the individual who's listening, dear God, that you'll just convict them, Lord. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'll save the one that's nearest to eternity. We thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you're listening to Preach the Word with Dean Carmichael Jr. I got a special guest speaker today. He's no stranger to the broadcast, Brother Charlie Moore. He's a dear friend. Uh, Brother Charlie is actually um, here with us today, and he's going to bring us a message. And um, so thankful for him being willing to help out, and so thankful for the Lord letting our paths cross. I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then Brother Charlie is going to take over. And he's going to preach for the broadcast today. Dear Lord, thank you for all your many blessings. I thank you, dear Lord, for um, this this day that you've given us. Thank you, dear Lord, for Brother Charlie and for his testimony. Thank you, Lord, for his church, New Hope Baptist Church, and his pastor, Brother Randy Hobbs, and the testimony that they have, Lord. And I pray, dear Lord, you'll just hide Brother Charlie behind the cross, Lord. Give him the words to say. Fill him with your spirit. I pray, dear Lord, for those that are listening today, whatever the need may be, that you'll convict where conviction is needed, dear God, and they'll just not hear what he's saying, but listen to what you gave him to say, dear Lord. We say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dean, for that introduction. Thank you, Lord, for for that prayer. And uh, over the last week or so, uh, the Lord has burdened my heart. Uh, about a message and uh, not very long ago I heard a message that was preached and as I told Brother Dean earlier uh, out of that message that I heard preached uh, the Lord gave to me uh, I pulled from that message uh, this message that I'm going to bring to you even this morning Uh, we live in perilous times Uh, we live in a time where it seems that everyone is trying to find the easy way out, trying to satisfy self. Uh, The message that I have this morning that God has given to me is simply entitled this, Three Things a Man Can't Live Without. Three Things a Man Can't Live Without. And the first thing I'd like to bring to you uh, this morning is that a a man cannot live without the shedding of blood. Amen. We find in Hebrews 9.22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Amen. When I think about that verse, I can't help but also think about a hymn that's been sung uh, so many times down through the years. There's power, power, wondrous working power, in the blood. Um, There's something about the blood that God allows us to know from the very beginning. uh, That without the shedding of blood, there's no uh, remission of sin. And and even from the beginning, the Lord has allowed us to see the importance of the blood. When I think about Adam and Eve, and when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, uh, they took it upon themselves when they knew that something was different, something was wrong, they went and they took fig leaves and they uh, sewed these fig leaves together to cover their nakedness. But we find that the Lord came and He took away the fig leaves and He clothed them with animal skins. And uh, you say, well, what is the significance of that? Well, if you, if you think about it, in order for God to be able to clothe Adam and Eve with the animal skins, blood had to be shed. Uh, from an animal so that Adam and Eve's uh, nakedness can be covered. Also see in Genesis 4.10 that we see the power that was in the blood. Uh, when Cain killed Abel, the Bible says in Genesis 4.10, uh, this is the Lord speaking to uh, Cain uh, after he had killed Abel. He said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth, unto me from the ground. There's power in the blood. Insomuch so that even the, the voice of the blood of, uh, of uh, 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 Abel was crying out from the ground. 
and uh, God let uh, Cain realize that. And God has placed a great emphasis on the blood, even in Scripture. The Bible says in Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. If you was to take the thought uh, uh, of the blood and how many times that the blood is mentioned in the Bible, at least in the old 1611 Amen. King James Bible, Amen. we'll find that three, approximately 392 times Amen. you'll find that in the Bible That's it's right. mentioned concerning the blood. And what's unique about that is of those 392 times that in the entire Bible that the blood is mentioned nearly 300 times that's mentioned in the Old Testament alone. Amen. When you look uh, at uh, Ephesians 2.13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We look at 1 John 1 and verse number 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And man cannot live without the blood. And the blood is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. If you were to turn over to Hebrews chapter number 10, beginning with verse 11, possibly verse 12, it says, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, Amen. this is Jesus, yes. for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. Man can not live without the blood. Amen. I would ask a question even this morning as I continue this thought. Uh, do you want to go to heaven? The blood must be applied to your heart if you want to go to heaven. Revelation 9.13, speaking about our Lord, it said, And He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and His name is called the Word of God. Amen. When I read that, I can't help but think about uh, John 1.1 1, 1, that says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When you look at that uh, also in John 1.14, that first part of John 1.14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. You know, if I was to go back to John 1.1, 1, 1, and I've heard this done before, if you was to go back to John 1.1 1, 1 and look and replace the Word, the Word with Jesus, it would sound something like this. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm so thankful for that blood that covers all sin. Not only does it cover all sin, but it takes it away. It separates our sin as far as the east is from the west. Right. We serve a holy God that demands perfection. We serve a holy God that even in my life and Brother Dean's life and and your life perhaps here that you're listening over the airway, that, that uh, uh, as far as the east is from the west, God has separated all of our sins from Amen. us if we have had the blood of Jesus applied to our life. Yet we see our Lord uh, hanging on a cross, extended between heaven and earth uh, for you and for me. When Jesus was hanging on that cross on Golgotha's hill nearly 2,000 years ago, uh, I like the expression, and I put it down here, that perhaps the angels were at parade rest while Jesus was hanging on the cross. Uh, There's nothing that they could do. Uh, the old song says that, uh, that he could have called 10,000 angels. Jesus said, Peter, uh, after he cut off the ear of the, the servant of the high priest, uh, uh, he told uh, that one, Jesus told him, said, Peter, said, don't you realize that I can call 12 legions of angels? And if my math is right, that's somewhere around 72,000 angels 
that God could have called while he was hanging on the cross to stop it all. But he loved you, my friend. He loved you and he loved me. He loved us so much. Jesus knew that it was the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin without that blood. I'd like to ask you something even this morning before I go to my next point. Has the blood been applied to your life? Has there ever been a time where you've asked Christ to come into your heart and uh, and save your soul, to ask the Lord to say, Lord, to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and make me a new creation in Christ Jesus? Well, I want you to know that there's no other way except the blood of Jesus. Amen. I stand here, uh, and, and, and it seems like that the older I get, the more unworthy I feel. I mean, uh, I'm like one preacher said, uh, I don't see why God even takes time to look my way. But I'm glad that He did. He He loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. I'm, I'm able to love you. I'm able to love other people. I'm able to know just in a small way what love is because He first loved us. Before I move to the second point, I just want to say it one more time. Uh, that it, without the shedding of blood, that man cannot live. Man cannot live without the shedding of blood. But not only can man not live without the shedding of blood, but we also see that man cannot live without faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.6, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'd like to ask you a question as I continue this morning. Are you seeking the Lord today? I say to myself, and I ask you again, are you seeking the Lord today? What are you seeking? Uh, I have reason to believe uh, uh, from experience in life that people, uh, not only here in America, but people all over, uh, all over the world, they're seeking for something. They're seeking for happiness. They're seeking for contentment. They're seeking for something to make it from one day to the next. Uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, that if you have any desire uh, for heaven to be your home, uh, not only do you need the blood applied to your heart, but you need to have faith. You need to believe that God can do it and that Jesus will do it. Matthew 7, uh, beginning with verse number 13, uh, brings that familiar scripture to play where he says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go uh, in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Sometimes when I read that verse, I, I cringe. Because you know what that verse is saying? That verse is saying that uh, of all the people in the world that's ever lived, all the people in the world that's living now, all the people that's going to be living in the future, that the majority of the world dying and going to hell. I had someone tell me not too very long ago. They said it in a joking way. They said that uh, that uh, people that uh, how did he put that expression that uh, that people are are, uh, are dying. Uh, talking about something about uh, ha uh, going to hell in a handbasket. That's what he said. He said people are going to hell in a handbasket. But you know, because of the precious blood and because of the faith that we have in Christ, they can dangle me over hell on a, on a thread. But you know what? The flames of hell won't get me because Jesus has separated my sin from me as far as the east is from the west. That doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Uh, God knows my heart each and every day. I have to, it seems like I have to pray more. I have to read my Bible more. I have to strive more. Right. Uh, we live in a world that's got so much it seems like to offer, yeah. but without Jesus you don't have Amen. anything. Right. Man cannot live uh, uh, without faith in yeah. God. Right. Now, I, I like what it says, what Jesus said uh, 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 to a group there in Mark 11 and verse number 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. I remember I heard a message uh, uh, from someone not too very uh, long ago. Have faith in God. And you know, I about went into a holy conniption somewhere in the middle of that, thinking about faith in God. I mean, listen, 
we ought to rise up every morning saying, thank you, Jesus. Amen. We ought to be able to just look uh, uh, out at the beautiful uh, sunshine and the blue skies and everything that God has created and realize that all of this is because of a holy God, a three-time holy God. And you know, if you want to live and you want to make sure that everything's okay with you and you're on your way to heaven, God says to have faith. In God. In Hebrews 11, verse number 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When I read that verse, and many times as I read it, even though you can't take faith and put it in your hands, but I want to tell you something. God has declared in His Word that faith is a substance. And without that faith, you can not please God. See, the devil doesn't mind uh, you having faith in certain things. You say, would you say, Brother Charlie? Yeah, the devil doesn't mind you having faith in certain things, just so that it isn't God. He doesn't want you to have faith in the things of the Lord. Right. Why is that? Because if you have faith in God, let me tell you something, my friends, that are listening this morning, lives are changed. Because of faith in God, prayers are answered. Because of faith in God, the devil just can't win. Why? Because we have faith in God. We find that lives are transformed. Churches are on fire with, for God. We find that our desire to pl- is to please God and not self. Man cannot live without faith. Uh, and that faith has to be in a three-time holy God. Well, I ask you again. Do you want to go to heaven? You must have faith. You want to go to heaven? You must have faith. You must have faith in God. And let me tell you something. If you do not have faith in God, the life that you're living is just a dead life. You realize what the Bible teaches and tells us? That uh, you don't have to wait before you stand before God and find out that, oh, it's too late and, and uh, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, I'm on my way to hell. Let me tell you something. It, on this side of eternity, if you have not turned your life over to the Lord, you're already dead and trespasses and sin. Man right. cannot live without faith. That's right. But the last point that we have is the main point of the other two. I, I say that if you want to life, you must uh, have the blood applied. I say that if you want life and you want to be able to live, that you need to have faith. But here's the main course of this whole meal that I'm giving to you. You say, what would you say, Brother Charlie? I said, this whole meal that I'm giving to you, that God's given to me, was sliding underneath the table. And the best thing that you can have, man cannot live without Jesus. Amen. The world today seems to have what I thought as I finished up my my study on this even last night. The world seems to have, as I call it, a smorgasbord of ways to get to heaven. I mean, it's just like that uh, it don't take you far uh, to go. You don't have to go far to see that the world has so much to offer. Amen. I mean, the world will offer you this. The world will offer you that. And uh, they say that all roads lead to heaven. And they'll say that God understands. One of my uh, relatives had told me not too many years ago, when I tried to tell him about Jesus, he made a comment to me. He said, Oh, Charlie, he says, me and God are tight. We've got it all together. Uh, and, but, but, you know, and people have this, uh, let, let's pick and choose. Uh, syndrome, you know, right. for God, and uh, let, let's pick and choose what suits sh- suits us. But let me tell you something: without the blood, without faith, without Jesus, man cannot live. What are you trusting in today? As you're standing, as you're sitting there, whatever you may be doing, as you're listening in over the airways, what are you trusting in today? Are you trusting in temporal things? You say, "What do you mean by that, brother Charlie?" Things that don't last. Are you trusting in your health? Are you trusting in your money? Are you trusting in your family? Are you trusting in your friends? Temporal thing, the Bible says in Revelation 21 and verse number 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know, uh, 
would to God that our nation, our nation, would turn back to God. Uh, I mean, my heart is burdened with many of us. Uh, our hearts are burdened because of the way that our nation is even right now. Wouldn't it be nice to have prayers put back into our schools? Not only back into our schools, back into our lives, back into our churches. You say, why do you say back into our churches? Because we got churches on every corner. And some of them might as well have Ichabod written on the door because the Spirit of God has departed. We have taken God and not only kicked Him out of the government, we kicked Him out of our churches. We kicked God uh, out of our very lives. But I want to tell you, out of love this morning, Brother Charlie says that man cannot live without God. Man cannot live without Jesus. Amen. Has the Lord been dealing with you lately? And have you been ignoring Him? I want to urge you even this morning, don't ignore the Lord today. As He speaks to you, will you do something? Will you listen to Him? As He comes and He knocks on your heart's door, behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man opens the door. And, uh, uh, Revelation uh, 20, uh, Three uh, teaches and tells us that that the the Lord is standing there at the do, uh, at your heart's door and He's knocking. And uh, so, as He speaks, will you listen? Will you decide to live for Jesus? Man cannot live without the blood. Man cannot live without faith. And man cannot live without uh, uh, Jesus. Revelation three twenty. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he with me. What a precious scripture to allow us to realize uh, that we're not alone. That uh, the rapture hadn't taken place yet. Death hadn't taken us out. We're still alive. We're still aware. Uh, 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 still uh, well, and we're still aware uh, that there is a God. Amen. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, verse 8. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 1 John three sixteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God, for He laid down His life for us. And the rest of that verse says, and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. God loves you, my friend. I'm glad that God loved me. I'm glad that He loved me when I was unlovable. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jesus says to a lost world, and He's saying this to you, He's saying, Look, and live. Look and live. You see, what's he, what's he saying? To look? He's saying look to Jesus. Let Jesus, even this morning, be the author and the finisher of your faith. Look to Jesus and live. May we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we would come before thy throne. We thank you, Lord, for the love of God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity uh, to be able to, to just for a few moments of time, preach the Word of God. We thank You for the obedience that Brother Dean has, uh, Lord, to allow us to come. We thank You for that. But most of all, Lord, we just ask You, Lord, that Your Spirit would just move. You would uh, uh, deal with that one, knock on that heart's door, that one that even perhaps might be nearest to eternity. Lord, we don't know when You're coming back, but we know it's soon. And Father, we just ask You, Lord, that, that we will be busy, that we will be busy uh, Lord, to get as many in uh, uh, before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, Brother Charlie. We appreciate that. Praise the Lord. And I was sitting there listening while he was preaching. We we can't have life unless we have the blood, unless we have faith, hmm. but unless we have Jesus. And as he was preaching that, I couldn't help but think about Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, hmm. but after this... Yes the judgment. Amen. And it goes on to say, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. As you're listening to this this broadcast, I wonder, you know, do you have the Lord's blood applied to your life? You stand before an almighty God one day. Mm -hmm. You'll have to answer for your sins if you do not have the blood applied to your life. Mm -hmm. If you do not have faith in your life, if you do not have Christ, if you do not accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, 
and turn away from your sins, you'll have to stand before an almighty God one day and answer for every sin that you ever committed Mm -hmm. and God will not allow that into heaven. But I'm glad this morning as I stand here, if something were to happen to me right now, though I'm not perfect like Brother Charlie said about himself earlier, I'm saved by grace. And if I was to stand before the Lord, even right now, when he saw me, he would see the blood of his son. God bless you. We thank Brother Charlie for coming over and preaching to us. Uh, Let's close with the Lord in in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Charlie, for the message that we heard. I pray, God, that we'll give you all the honor and glory. I pray, Lord, there's one listening, even right now, God, they don't know for certain that they are saved. I pray, Lord, today will be the day of salvation. The Holy Spirit of God will put strong Holy Ghost conviction on them, and they'll be saved even right now. We say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.